Hi, I'm David Gregg, director of the Natural History Survey. This week's hashtag Natural History Tuesday video is about water chestnut. No, not the water chestnut of Asian cuisine. That's a sedge, Iliocarus dulcus. No, I'm talking about the invasive water chestnut, or water caltrop, plants in the genus Trappa. Trappa natans, the water chestnut, was first discovered in Rhode Island in 2007 in Belleville Pond in North Kingstown. Since then, it's been found in ponds all around the state, and it's become a serious problem. It impairs recreation, fishing, or swimming, or boating, and it uh, covers the water's surface and prevents sun and oxygen from getting to the lower levels of the pond. When those plants die at the end of every season, they sink into the water and decompose, which also robs the water of oxygen. I heard that there was a researcher studying Trappa, both Trappa natans and a congener, Trappa bispinosa, in Professor Laura Meyerson's lab at URI. And I thought, Wow, this is really interesting. I would love to know more about this species. It's becoming a real issue in the state. So I went to visit her uh, in her lab at URI. The Rhode Island Natural History Survey presents videos to showcase the animals, plants, geology, and natural systems that surround us, and the people and organizations working to understand and conserve them. I'm here at URI to work on my dissertation work. I'm a first year PhD student working with Dr. Laura Meyerson, who's an invasion ecologist here at URI. And I'm on a one year long, long term training assignment or deployment for the US Army Corps of Engineers where I come to URI. So I've got three experiments that I'll be doing for that work. Yeah. And um, so I'll be leaving in August, but I will be continuing this work as a research biologist for the Corps of Engineers um, for as long as the Corps will let me do research on water chestnut. So for me, getting involved with water chestnut, um, there's a core program that has been uh, funding uh, management of water chestnut uh, for some time in Lake Champlain. And I actually got involved uh, with water chestnut specifically when I was asked to respond to a uh, the core request from Baltimore District, which is up in New England, and uh, they are responsible for the navigation within the Potomac River. And so uh, Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries and USGS had brought to their attention this species of water chestnut that didn't look like water chestnut. So I was invited to come as a researcher to investigate further. And so we did a preliminary survey, indeed, yes, this species looked different. It looked just like water chestnut, what we think of, European water chestnut, trapping yep. hands. But it had pink flowers, and it had two spines instead of four. Okay. So, um, so then that started funding for research in the water chestnut on the core side. And right. so, so I did Taxonomy and genetics and also how it behaves. Oh, yeah. So we had to find out what species that was. I yeah. mean, um, so that... <laughs> So we initiated some work doing some surveys for samples of water chestnut within the Northeast and then also abroad you know, where it's native. And uh, so it's native to Europe and Asia and then also to uh, 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 South Africa. So we got samples from South Africa, from China, Japan, Taiwan, and we got a genetic hit for this new, what we call Trappa SP uh, from Taiwan. And so working with a researcher there, we found out that this new species with pink flowers was Trappa bispinosa uh, variety I knew mine. So what is this big green box? So this big green box is a growth chamber and it is a temperature controlled environment. You can control the temperature, you can control the humidity, you can control the CO2 inside, but for my purposes for this study it's just temperature. So this particular growth chamber is set at 8 degrees C. And within it, I have all these cups of individual seeds of two different species of trappa. So there's three populations of trappa natans and three populations of trappa bispinosa. So the trappa natans 
There's a population from Lake Champlain in Vermont, uh, from the Hudson River in New York, and then from Chapman Pond here in Rhode Island. And so, so one of the questions we get all the time is, is this a seed pod, or a seed, or a nut, or what is it? So this is, it's a seed. Right, it's not a seed pod, because there are not seeds in it. No, this, that, this, right, yeah. this is, this is the seed. Now, it was a fruit. When it comes off of the rosette, it is a fruit. It has a fleshy outer uh, curry part. This is the hard inner endocarp. And okay. when it germinates, I don't know if you can see it or not, but oh, yeah. it produces this little epicaudal uh, structure that comes out of the terminal core where the seed was attached to the plant, yeah. the rosette, the floating rosette. That's the... So that is the, the, the seed. The seed. Which the plant, the stems, and the rosette. So the rosette sits on top of the water right. and it's attached right. via there a stem. Is, there is floating and it goes down with this anchor. That's the anchor and this is kind of the anchor line that goes down there. Yeah, so yep. it's got, so the rosette's at the top and this one actually has two different rosettes forming. Yeah. So that's the that's the seed at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And these are roots roots. <laughs> Those are roots roots. Right. Yes. And then there's the stem that goes up to the rosette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the and the flowers are where? So the flowers would be born right here in the axles. Um, kind of around the center where the Mary stem is. And one of the uh, interesting morphological distinguishing features between other than the seeds oh. are the leaves. So Trapa natans is this really you know, bright green and Trapa bispinosa is red. Oh, okay, so that's the, that's the bispinosa there. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of the variety again? I knew mine. I knew my, okay, and that's trapanatans. Yes, and so this doesn't. It isn't just that the spines broke off. These two broke off. They don't have. They don't have them. They don't have those spines. So the spines are actually the sepals of the flowers oh, that cool. continue to grow into a a spine that has. If you look at it really closely, all these other little tiny recurved. Right, the barbs. barbs. Yep. They're supposed to sink to the bottom. They if, are. They are negatively buoyant. Right. They sink to the bottom. Right. So, it, so why would it stick to a duck? So, what? whenever I've gone and collected seeds that are ready to drop off the plant, like I just rake my hand underneath the rosette to collect the seeds. If I don't catch them immediately, they fall they down fall to off. the bottom. Right. 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 But if, say, if you're a duck or waterfowl or some other mammal that cut like a, a muskrat or something, and you're going out after those fruits in that stage, you could very easily get a fruit to you. that Got sticks it. to you. Got it. Right. Um, my collaborator, Nancy Rybicki with USGS, she has seen mounds of trap of seeds on the uh, ground outside of ponds where geese have come up out of the water and they just preen themselves. They're just covered oh, in fruits and they just leave them right there in mounds. And that is really, really cool. So this is actually a trap in the tans. Yeah. And this is the the newly introduced that we think um, has been around. Uh, Nancy Rubick with USGS found a uh, Botanical record from 1995. Yeah. So we, that was the earliest record we found. You're interested in looking at the um, hybrid, the, the the effect of hybridization, or the 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 viability and effect of hybridization. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you hybridize two water chestnuts? So they both have to produce flowers. Yeah. And they have to do it at the same time. Mm hmm and then we have to manually cross-pollinate by taking pollen from a pollen parent mm -hmm. and giving it to a seed parent. So I'm literally going to use little cotton swabs to take pollen from, say, Trapanatans from the Hudson River 
and transfer that to travel by Spinoza from the Potomac River. I don't really want to see a hybrid. <laughs>